Hey guys, and welcome to our newest tutorial here. I'm Large H Mapping, and today we are doing the most basic tutorial. This is going to be the ones for those who just simply don't know anything. Um, okay, well, I'm going to try and get you guys to where you need to be, to at least use Giants Editor to move around, to be able to see, know a little bit about the panels that you can use, and how to get really use Giants Editor. Um, First things first, you gotta come to GDN, Giants Developer Network. You gotta create an account. Um, should just be an email and a password. From there, you're gonna wanna come over here. It should be downloads right there. Yeah. And then you'll just come here. You'll grab Giants Editor 9.0.3, newest version, download that. That'll give you an EXE, run the EXE. Um, it might come in a zip. Let me, I'll check that real quick here. Yeah, no, that's just the EXE, okay. So just download that and then click on it. It'll either be here in the corner or you can go to your files and you, it'll be here somewhere. So one of those two. And then from there, uh, let it install. Should be good. Um, for those working with FS19, um, when I get to my map asset tutorial that I'm gonna do here shortly, you will probably need that as well. Um, if you wanna use older versions of the game, mainly 19, um, FS17, you probably find a copy of that out there on the internet. Um, Giants no longer support it, but it's out there. I found it before. Um, other important facts for this website that you will come to know, uh, mainly uh, Blender exporter for those using Blender, that's here, hosted on Giants Network. Um, should be a GRLE converter here as well. You need that for mapping generally. And that is all. Um, they do have the AGI pack here for you guys to download as a actual file. For those who wanna maybe take and steal parts from that, that would be a good thing to note, to note here as well. But GDN is really a great website for getting Giants information. They have a form-based uh, information guide here too. Um, usually whenever I get a weird error, I'll throw that into Google and it'll actually take me here and someone else has had this problem or whatever problem I'm dealing with occur here so you can usually reference this website for that from that once giants editor is installed you're going to want to come down here or i guess it should create a desktop icon if not you can come over to your search here and you can just type in it should be what giant giants editor and then there's all the versions of giants editor i have installed on this computer for me this one right here i have it pinned to my ass uh, pinch my bottom bar there and then you'll get something like this now this is the editor i have mine set up uh, my screenograph is on the left here my terrain brush set up here is here and then also console is down here attributes are on my right here user attributes and materials now i'm might not get into what everything here does but I'm gonna talk a little bit about everything. Um, this is set up for me for map making more so than vehicle editing. So I do a little bit with this, this setup here as well with that. Um, on your left, let's open a map first. I'm just gonna open, what maps do I have here? Oh, uh, where, oh, where is it? Where is Mossy Glen? We'll look at that one. Be a good one to start with guys. We'll open this map up here and I'll show you guys a little bit about what, what is going on there. It might take a second. There are quite a few trees on this map so far. Um, other than that, those are my, there's that six main panels here actually on the screen. And then you have your top two bars there. Okay. So first bar is just your usual file. You can, do quite a few things through this here. Um, primarily, you can create new, which would create a new i3D for you to work with. You can open files, reload the file, you can save or save as. Open a mod, a new mod from game, which allows you to essentially create mods from in-game vehicles. Um, kind of what that does lets you get those files there that you can edit and kind of change around. Uh, import. Uh, import as reference, export all with files, export selection, export selection with files. So for map making, I would say the 
export selection with files and import are your two best friends here. That's what's going to allow you to bring stuff into your map generally. Um, export selection of files allows you to export the selected object. So if I were to come down here and say, choose, I don't know, let's just choose a tree, for instance. You're going to come down here and we're going to hit export selection with files. And it'll save it as an I3D. I'll come here, come to, let's say, go to my texture files here where all my I3Ds are stored. And I would just say tree, name it something, and then I would save it. After that, you're going to get two, two prompts. You're going to get one that says reference or something to the effect of keep the same directory. And then there, let me just, uh, and then there's a second one. Let me actually just show you guys this. It shouldn't affect anything. So let's just say tree. Trees and this thing, so it's not saving over top of something already. So do you want to get the parent directory structure? Usually I say no. You want to keep the game relative path. Usually this depends on the version you're using and what you're doing. So for instance, this tree, I'm using base game files from the FS22 data folder. I would say no to keeping those relative paths. Or sorry, not no. Yes to keeping those relative paths. You don't want to have FS22 files in a map that is using FS22 as a base game. So you want to keep as many of those files outside of your map folder and in the game folder as possible to reduce file size. So you would say yes, keep those game files. However, for something that does not reference game files, like for instance, this, which came from FS19, I would probably say no in the FS19 editor because I'm transferring it to 22. So I want to keep those original files with it. Um, so FS19 and FS22 files do not transfer between one another. You're going to, if you're taking something from 19 to 20, 22, say no to keeping those game relative files. I hope, hopefully that explains it best, as best as I can. Um, that should get you guys where you're going there in regards to exporting and importing. Importing is, as it says, you just come over here, import, and you just select one. Let's just select that tree there. And then there's our tree. All right. That should be all of the file extension there. Um, preferences. Um, you shouldn't have to set your preferences anymore. Um, preferences is just uh, here. I think Tyson Denez has one tutorial on this if your preferences are messed up. Um, you'll know as soon as you open up something and like half the textures are missing. So Tyson Denez for a tutorial on how to set your preferences. And then after that, recent files shows you what all I've opened and exit. And edit. Here's an undo, control Z. So let me just show that here. That tree back. And let's see what else. Edit, and then you have redo, control Y, clear history. Replace is control W, so, which is one of my favorite features. Control, control W. You can select your target. So this is my target. And then I can replace with different target. And I can come up here and say, I select, I don't know, the spline here. And hit load. I will replace that spline with this tree here. You can keep your user attributes, keep your physical attributes, keep your cliff distance. It's all kind of helpful. Um, keeping user attributes will leave. That will keep these here. So like scripts and things like that, it will keep its attributes or even your animated objects, those attributes. And then keep physical attributes of so these attributes. So like your size, your location, your X, Y, Z. So it'll keep the spines, spines location, not necessarily the trees location. And then you can lock the groups as well. And clip distance just has to do with how far out you that object. Generally, you want to keep that between 500 and 1,000. Larger objects, you might want to do a little bit further. And smaller objects that you're not usually going to see, you want to keep that a little bit lower. All right, and then after that, you just have your standard cut, copy, paste. Should be Control X, Control C, and Control V. I think that's pretty standard. Delete 
Um, it's the delete key on your keyboard if you have a likely a 75% and above keyboard. Um, I have a 100% keyboard, so I have the numpad and everything. And then duplicate is control D. So again, one of my favorite buttons here. So if we hit control D, duplicates that tree. So we have another one of these trees here. And edit here, and then we have move camera, or move to camera, and then interactive placement, control B, which is the other thing I'm doing here. So to grab, so now that you've control D'd that object, you've duplicated that object, you hit control B, you can move this object anywhere you want on the screen with that uh, control B. So that, that's a super useful tool, one of my favorites. Delete that, and that one can go as well. From there, we move over to create. You can create a transform group, which is this guy right here at the top, transform group. This here, this little logo indicates a transform group. This is also a transform group. You can create a light source, which will create a light. Some mappers like to have this around them when they're working in darker places. It just lights up the screen. For that, you can create a camera. It's mainly for vehicles, things like that. But come here, come over to view, view from that camera. Now we should see my other camera somewhere in here. Go back to our perspective camera, get rid of that camera. Uh, audio source, you can create an audio source. Um, I won't mess around with that too much. I may come back to that and talk about custom audio sources later. I'm your spline. I've done quite a bit with splines. Um, we'll do more with them as they come along, but that's how you create a spline. Then from here, pretty simple if you've followed my spline tutorial. And then you also want to come down here. You can create a nav mesh, which is for animal pens. When I do an animal pen uh, tutorial, we can go over that. Notes, that's not something I messed with, but seems pretty useful. And take a note card, what I understand. And then you just say, hi, hello, how are you? And that should, let's see. That's something new with I believe 3.0. You can create yourself little notes and you can uh, kind of kind of leave stuff for you if you ever forget anything. Then primitives, you can create a cube, a plane, a sphere, a cylinder, a cone, a pyramid. Just basic shapes. Um, cubes are usually pretty nice for things. Um, trim, and other things that you might have to do. I don't know if I'll ever go into that, but Cubes and planes will come in handy depending on what you're doing. Just kind of up to you to figure out what you're doing with them. Like if I create a cube, cube is super basic, nothing special. And, but you can shape it any way you want, really, which is the best thing about them. And before I go into scripts and anything else, some of you may be wondering, how am I moving around? And I realized I have not quite covered this yet for a basic tutorial. Um, moving around is pretty simple. So to move the camera, left, right, up, down, it's gonna be your right button. Move you up and down, left and right. So follow your curse. Your scroll wheel will move you in and out, slowly. Your left mouse button will Drag box basically like um if any of you have you know let me come back if any of you have done this on your home screen it's the same effect basically copy these and I can drag them along wherever I want them to to be basically um not necessarily like that what that is used for is a select tool basically I can come over here select that group of trees now I can only move the one tree but I can delete the entire group. So that's kind of what that purpose is for. And then for moving around quicker, you can hit, I believe it would be your left control, and then W. Actually, hold on, sorry. Not left control, left shift, shift key. will move you forward. We'll also move you backwards, left, and right, using the uh, WASD keys. 
And from there, you can also, I believe, see what else is there for this? Um, right. So nav speed down the corner here. Nav speed. This can be changed using your numpad. Plus and minus keys will change your nav speed. The higher this number goes, the faster you move. So move a little bit faster, the higher I make that number. I can slow that way down so I don't move as much. Well, I'm much slower. Other than that, that is your mate. That is the major parts of moving around in GE. WHD, left shift, left, left mouse button, right mouse button. Sorry. Kind of your major move around, right mouse button, use to select. Hold it down to select, or you can just simply click once, select one object. From there, you can come over here to view cameras. I have not a whole lot here. Um, wireframe, kind of an interesting one for the load. There you go. The wireframe, the wireframe is there. You actually see the poly count and things like that. A little bit better. It. GE doesn't like rendering and re-rendering a lot of trees. All right. You other than that, um, selectable. You can selectable. So to, this will show everything here: flights, audio source, cameras, lines, terrain, meshes, notes, so on. Uh, mainly, this is for NGE. Select what you. Can see, can't see. If you want your lights off, you can turn your lights off. Things like that. Uh, profile. This is the settings of your GE. I think it's usually set to low or medium. I have mine on very high. Just, just uh, whatever profile settings you need for GE generally. Uh, debug. I haven't messed with this too much. I'm sure, this has uses somewhere. That looks like mostly for vehicle modding. Probably has some uses, but yeah. Graphics for streaming, attachment, uh, port scripts. It's a new one. That before, but um, mapping scripts. Um, ground collision map will create um tip codes. Generally speaking, from your paint to ground tip codes. Get field sizes. Will you have your um? If you have your field and definitions in. Click this while clicking the uh, the fields transform group that'll give you the sizes of your fields. Physical property test. I can't say that has much to do with the map. I believe that test if you're uh, you know some objects in the game have gravity applied to them or they'll fall over. Mainly signs and things you can pick up. I believe that's what that's for testing. Um, this button here allows you to toggle render your field definition. So if I were to click on my fields, I can render all the fields that I have in the map or defined within the map right here. So if I were to toggle it, all these fields would be painted different colors Show the definition that I have set for them. After that, we would have reasons, generate mask. I found that this feature does not work half the time. I, I don't have much to say about this one. Generally, you're going to have to paint that yourself. Terrain. Um, this is greatly helpful. I do. I love. Um, we'll set terrain by height, by spline, or set terrain height by spline. Allows you to put in ditches and things like that. The spline, I can that curve there. I smoothed it out and then you got that curve to it. And what you do is you just take your spline and you run it from one end to the other end. Kind of follow the terrain as you, you want it to. Try and have it set as close to the terrain as possible. Really a helpful little script that we have given. Um, place objects on terrain. How I did a lot of these trees is I selected their entire groups and placed them on terrain so it's all perfectly on the terrain for each one. See, they're all perfectly on the terrain. And then from there, have Vehicles, this isn't really important if you're doing mapping. And these are all my custom scripts, which I'll eventually get into. Um, 
The other thing here, create new script, get a new script here. So this isn't where we do it at. And Windows, so viewport, screen graph. So your viewport is what you actually see here in Jeez. Right here. Screen graph here on your left. It is everything you currently have in your I3D. So just a bunch of trees and things like that in this map. What I see. There. Attributes over here. So your attributes here. Three. Watch this little thing here. This way. That way. These numbers change. Correspond with where it's located on the map. The Y will change as I raise and lower it. Rotation. Change as I rotate the object. Round. Left. Right. Up. Down. Um, scaling. Change. Grab this little guy right there. I'll scale the entire object there in the center. Go this way, stretch it that way, this way, this way here too. I, I haven't moved, used this very much. I haven't found these little buttons here very useful, this one or this one. So if you find use in, feel free to use it. Um, you have user attributes so for this. Usually, let's say, let's take garage door here. Grab the entire tree. This is an animated object going to my animated object on create. I'll eventually create a tutorial for animated objects, but it has an on create an index, so it has the name on create file extension. That's kind of what these user attributes do is it it is to help these objects find find either where they're trying to look for, so like your XML it's looking for, your on create, so what it's doing. The onCrete is basically the script that lets it move. I want to move, and then the index is the name. Um, another one to look at, you'll likely need here, is your fields. My fields just have the field util onCrete, which allows it to be recognized as my fields for this map. Below that, if you come down, grab just one field. It has a couple different things attached to it, and it's field angle, field dimension. Field grass mission, field grass mission allowed, and name indicator. So these two here um, will let you decide build can be uh, used for grass missions or if missions are allowed, your angle, stuff like that. I'm not going to go too much further into this user attribute. That's what they are. They control what the transform group for the object does. From there, we'll move down another. Screen editing is this window down here. I will do an entire tutorial on how to use this here, but it contains all your info layers for all your farmlands and your fruit density, your indoor mask, navigation, collision, all that lovely stuff. Um, mesh painting, this little brush here. Um, let's you paint down objects. Like I can paint all these trees down, the mesh painting. Um, the only thing I will say is do not have a large plane in your map. If there's anything below your brush in the uh, map, visible or not, it will not allow you to paint. Um, above that, there is uh, extra layer painting. So that is all your different painting paintings there for your, um, like your gravel, mud, and all It's for this right here. And then I forgot to mention your foliage layer painting has all your wonderful foliage. So your grass, your meadow, bushes, your wheat, your barley, your canola, and so on. And above all of that, here is your brush itself. So grab our brush. Radius is the actual size of the brush here. Capacity, hardness, and value. Change what it does. So if we do that, you know, I'm, I'm raising the terrain there. Actually, it's probably best to show it this way. There we go. We're using the terrain. Set that set any of these values lower. Let's do it slower. Generally, it goes on there. Below that, round or square brush. Square brush look a square. Round brush. Round brush. Then you can add, smooth, subtract, place, erode, slope, set slope, light target. Um, add. 
adding to terrain places on my middle mouse button. So I usually keep subtract there. Track subtracts terrain. Smooth, smooths terrain. Now here, replace the replace with terrain. See that replaces it to yeah. And set your limit to how high you replace it. So right now it's up to zero, so it takes it all the way down to zero. And then erosion still the kind of changes the ground to I believe it would make the path of least resistance if you wanted to do that. I haven't messed with erosion too much. Slope, um, you need to have the set slope target. And that is on my middle mouse button. That little little pink arrow there, if you can see it. That's my uh, target height. And then if I hit my left mouse button, it will change everything around it to meet that target height. So that one's useful as well. Let me set this back up to the way I like it. There we go. Our next window, animation. I, I can't say anything about animation, never used it. Script editor. This is how you add your scripts to your map. So under users, right click, create a script, create a folder, delete a folder, explore folder. You can explore a folder. Usually what you're gonna do, you can drag over whatever script you download and throw in here. And that's about all for script editors, prefabs. Uh, I don't like that tab. Um, this lets you download prefabs off the Giants Mod Hub. I recommend just going to the website and doing it there. Article editing, not really important. Material editing, not really important. Post effects, yeah, yeah, yeah. None of this, nothing else here other than console, which is this bottom screen here. Console tells you everything that is going on in your map. Not a whole lot here. Couple, probably a couple of errors. Yeah, one error there. That just tells you what's going on there. From there, help, uh, online documentation, keyboard shortcuts, videos. Uh, online documentation might be helpful. Keyboard shortcuts might be helpful. And then we'll go on to this bar here. So you have a new i3D, open i3D file, open i3D in text editor, reload, save i3D, save i3D file as. So this is a new new file, this creates a new file. This allows you to open a file. Uh, this lets you open in text editor. So that usually, I believe that automatically pulls up like notepad, edit there. So reload the entire i3D, like reload the map. For instance, if I just want to reload the map, I could do that. Or usually you can use that to reload a object or vehicle. That's where I suggest with that. Save, this is your best friend. I will say control S on the keyboard. Good. Auto save that, or not auto save. But save that for you, keyboard shortcut. I recommend doing that very often. Um, save as, I, I've never used save as. I don't a reason to unless you're um exporting to blender or yeah, pretty much just exporting to blender the only reason i would do is to save as and then import i3d file allows you to import like i did earlier with the button above uh undo and redo right there play button this is to test your objects generally this here is first person mode this is something new with Giants Editor 9.0. Allows me to look around like I was in the game, basically. And then to exit this mode, just hit Escape. Um, home button, local world mode. I'm not exactly sure what these do. I've, I've never found them useful. I'm sure someone would know more about that, but eh, ignore them. This is raised terrain. This is your terrain bush right there. Your paintbrush, paint. This is your um, layer painting, mesh painting. This is called. So, if, so for this, you're gonna need an object. Say that one there. And you're gonna need to grab. Where is it? Plane right there. This right here, that plane right there, got to move for me to show this off. So mesh painting is a little bit different than the rest of them in the fact that 
You have a plane below it, and it lets you paint your trees down. It's kind of what that's for. Alrighty, and then from there is your terrain paint. So right now it's selected on farmlands. So the map, which is your viable land. There's all my viable land for the map. Then you have just your basic painting brush for your fruit. So it lets me paint things like this here. You paint my field down. It lets me paint my grass down, my deco foliage there, my other foliage here. That's all that brush does. Um, for figuring out the values for this, um, generally you can scroll down and if I want say grass harvested, it will auto select what I need. Not the case for everything. Sometimes you have to manually input what you want, particularly with farmland. Farmlands work a little bit different. So zero is one, one is two, zero and one is three very weird system and it takes some getting used to like just mess around with that when you get to that stage i will likely include a tutorial from guy wizard in my tutorial um, playlist that will hopefully teach you guys everything you need to learn there i'm going to go through and update my entire playlist at some point to include all the, the important things for mapping that's out there and i'll try and fill in the gaps from there other than that there is nothing here that I would say is super important other than these two buttons here. Reload all textures and reload textures. For MapMaker, they're somewhat important. Um, if you are selecting a texture with the same name as the previous texture. So let's say I'm trying to make this white steel look a little bit different and I'm, and I'm saving it and paint that net, but I am not changing the image itself here, my actual extension. So Still using white or white steel DDS as my name for my file. Ain't done that, and I'm just saving over this version. To get that to appear in GE, you have to reload all textures or reload textures in the map. Just depends how GE feels that day. It's just something you got to do. Either one will usually work. Uh, whichever one doesn't work, the other one will work. Generally speaking. Other than that, I believe that is all there is to know about Giants Editor, the basics. Um, if you have any questions about anything else, ask me. I think I've got most of my bases covered. This is not the definitive absolute. This is how you use it and how you have to use it. You find shortcuts, figure things out. Good, honestly. Anything to make your life easier is really huge with this program. Um, I guess one other thing I will say is, you know, I'm thinking about it. I just selected a random tree. Hit F, and it brings you straight to a tree. Or not a tree, but to an object. So I can select that anywhere on the map. I want to go over there now. And it lets you jump around if you want to. If you have any questions about shortcuts, um, there should be. There should be, or, yeah, key, editor keyboard shortcuts right there. Here is every single shortcut that there is to know in the entire game. It explains, there's a nice in-depth tutorial on how to use everything in the editor. This is old. I can tell it's old because that right there is from FS 17 at the very least. So this is not up to date. Um, biggest thing are these right here, your keyboard shortcuts. Do you know everything you need to know? Oh, get to know these, get to understand these. These are big. Other than that, I've been Large H Mapping. Thanks for tuning in. Um, hopefully this is uploaded sometime soon. I'll try to work on getting that playlist together. Um, if you're looking at this now, um, I would say do not plan on making a EEM map based on my tutorial from like 20, 2021, 2020, when that tutorial was made, which everyone has 3.4K views or whatever. Don't use that one. Hopefully a new tutorial by me will be out here soon that will be using a much better method of terrain data. Um, the way I was using 12 months ago is not accurate in the slightest. 
do not use that. Um, that is all, guys. Thanks for watching. I've been Large H.